Oh. I am going to play on Saturday, and I look, wish you luck uh, you know, in all that you do on the golf course. It's a wonderful course, and we hope the weather stays like this. I wish you luck with that, and I'm very glad you did it. Yes. You can come on my programme sometime and I'll be kind to you, you lovely people. Thank you very much, Terry. It's the only time you've ever been shut up at this time of the night because it is some football match. Thank you. <laughs> well, indeed, it is some match with records galore hanging on the result of it. Can Liverpool, the holders, retain the European Cup or will Juventus win it at last? Well, after a moment of hilarity with Terry Wogan and Bruce there, I'm afraid the news is very bad from Brussels. Hooliganism has struck again, and I'm afraid the scenes are as bad as anything we've seen for a long, long time. People have been stretched off. Uh, the Liverpool supporters uh, took on the police at one point. It's not certain whether any lives have been lost at this moment. Joe Fagan, um, with obviously tremendous sympathy um, with what was going on in his last match for Liverpool, went on the pitch... Uh, and appealed to the crowd saying, you know, this is my last match, please uh, behave yourselves. And it looks there as if they're getting some control of the scenes afterwards. I understood that uh, a wall collapsed at one point, which was the origination of some of the trouble and certainly the thing that may have caused those injuries. I'm not suggesting those injuries were caused um, or inflicted by crowds of either side. But uh, you can see the police there, uh, such typical pictures, we're extremely used to them over here and uh, Peter Jones uh, the BBC football correspondent said probably some of the worst scenes that he has seen uh, at a football ground which speaks for itself but it does seem with the kickoff in uh, not all that many minutes time now if it should take place as if they are restoring some kind of order well what an unhappy start uh, yes. Graham Soonis and Terry Venables uh, in Italy and uh, Spain, respectively, being a little bit away from our hooliganism problem, but probably sad to be, see it still there, Terry. Well, it's quite sickening. I mean, at a time when, um, certainly in Spain, I don't know about Italy, they have a tremendous respect now for British football. We, have, we are getting really to the front at last, uh, after a long period of being out off the scene. But when you mention this side of our game, the hooliganism, it's, it's quite uh, sickening uh, to, to feel uh, that people feel so bad about us all around Europe at a time when our football is becoming yeah. uppermost in, in our history for about ten, well, at least for 10, 20 years. Yeah. Well, I'm afraid these events have rather overtaken what we were going to do. I was going to congratulate you first, Graham, on last night's result for Scotland and, and ask you what you thought about the Joe Fagan business, but I'm afraid because of what's happened, we shall go straight now uh, to Brussels and join John Motson. Well, for the last 50 minutes, the Heysel Stadium in Brussels, the capital of Belgium, has been a sickening and bewildering sight. As a result, there is for certain serious injury when a wall collapsed and maybe worse. I've seen at least two stretchers carried away and the stretchers were covered from head to foot. To give you the evidence of my own eyes, the situation as I saw it, at the left end of the stadium, were supporters of both Liverpool and Juventus. They were divided by two long poles in various sections. Poles over which it was quite easy to climb, under which it was quite easy to move. And after a while, supporters of Liverpool moved into the Juventus area. For a while, there were some scuffles between the rival supporters a great deal of the sort of threatening, animal, hate-like behaviour which we've become all too accustomed to seeing at home. And then a lot of the Juventus supporters decided the time had come to move away. And they moved away with such pace and in such numbers. And in moving down towards the track that surrounds this ground here at the Heysel Stadium, 
a wall collapsed and certainly there were people pinned underneath the wall. I should say it is quite a small wall of no more than about four feet in height and there were a number of barriers in front of the wall and around the wall. So one can only hope that the injuries are not as serious as are being reported. There is no question there will be quite a delay before the start of the match. That's the wall I was talking about, which uh, collapsed at, at the bottom of the terracing. The Juventus supporters came onto the running track and onto the pitch. We saw the riot police appear. We saw the mounted police. We saw scenes all too familiar. And I think those of us in this commentary box felt once again an embarrassment at being British. Because just to our right, is the box of Rai, the Italian television company, who, like us, had come here to cover a football match between two of the great sides of Europe. And instead, their commentator was surrounded by tearful, hugely animated supporters of Juventus complaining to him about what had happened and trying to explain to him what we were all wanting to know. How can such things go on? There are the mass ranks of Liverpool supporters who have stayed in their own area. There are still others who, it has to be said, are standing in the area provided for Juventus. We can, of course, argue that the divide between the two should have been properly policed. Indeed, one might go further and say that the supporters of one team should have been at one ground and of the other team at the other. But I have to say that up to the point of the problems, the scene here reminded me very much of Rome in 1977. A sunny, balmy evening, just a slight breeze, everybody anticipating what we thought was going to be a great game. But how things have changed in those eight years, because then the supporters of Liverpool were full of humour and played such a great part in the success of their side. This evening, I'm afraid, some of those supporters have disgraced the name of a great club and that once again the minority have dragged the majority down to be despised around the football grounds of Europe. That's the Juventus end. Their end has been quiet except for the waving of flags and the usual chants and firecrackers. What we've seen at the other end has saddened the eye and really made us feel quite wretched. It's happening all too often. Sitting alongside me, Bobby Charlton, who saw not dissimilar scenes, Bobby, in Turin, when England played there in the European Championship. You said then that you felt embarrassed, or maybe that wasn't the word you used to be British. I wonder how you feel now. Well, Barry, I think they've explained it as well as anyone possibly could. Um, sitting up here in the, at the back of the stand in comparative safety, um, I still felt very very frightened indeed uh, as anyone would be to see such scenes uh, unfortunately I'm, I'm afraid that, that some people have been killed it would appear that way uh, immediately it became known I think even to the Liverpool supporters that it was really serious they started to calm down they also had Joe Fagan who came out and tried to to calm them down to tell them to go back to their to their original positions in the ground and they've basically done that up to a point uh, but there again, I think, and I'm not trying to defend what happened, but certainly the, the section area which was supposed to, to divide the Juventus and the Liverpool fans was really flimsy. It, it was so flimsy it was ridiculous. But nevertheless, I think that maybe, and it's a horrible thing to say, but maybe it has needed something like this to maybe make people take notice and actually do something to make sure that it doesn't happen again. I, I think that it, it's a disgrace the way people behave when they come into a football match. It is supposed to be a recreation, they're supposed to enjoy it, and I don't think for the moment it should be anything other than a sporting occasion. How, how do you explain it? I, I really don't know. I mean, you don't, you don't know the type of mentality that would perform such acts. Nevertheless, it seems to be a little quieter now than it has been, certainly over this last hour, and for all, for all the people that, that have been injured or, or have been fatally injured, I'm afraid. Um, it, it has been a disastrous night, certain, certainly from a humanitarian point of view. 
I hope that the game eventually does get going, but I cert it certainly has a shadow over it. I have to tell you that we have a report from the Brussels police which suggests that the death toll at the moment may be 15. The police are now making efforts to clear the pitch. And Bobby's reaction, I can tell you, as some of the fans still seem to want to be embroiled in fighting, I can tell you he's had to try and find the answer to many spectators who come up to him in his seat in the stand alongside me to ask one of the great names of British football how he can explain it. And it is impossible to do so. I think these scenes that we're looking at, in fact, are a recording of the earlier problems. But as one does look at them, one cannot but feel that the time has come, indeed, if I can express a personal opinion, has long since passed, when we have to consider the majority. And if that means that we have to take some steps to prevent the minority coming abroad to drag the name of our country into the gutter, then we have to do it. Because it seems that nothing less than that will solve this problem. At least let us try and sort out the problem at home and not have to explain it to those abroad. We're looking there at Rick de Sadler, the commentator of BRT, the company who are producing the pictures for tonight's transmission. He is trying to explain it. People have come up and said to us, it's not normal. And it shouldn't be, but sadly it is becoming all too normal for our national game. Juventus supporters standing calmly, for the most part, waving flags. There were one or two involved in the, in the scuttles and scuffles. One doesn't want to apportion blame, one can only say that it has happened too often involving British supporters to be thought to be coincidence. The pitch, at long last, is actually clear. The photographers who came to capture the goal mouth incidents have had to point their cameras to the crowds and indeed have the television cameras. It's a lovely evening, absolutely ideal for a game of football. A meeting between two sides who have been so much at the top of the tree of European football. Liverpool trying to win the European Cup for the fifth time. Juventus having never previously won it, but with a chance this evening if the match can take place of becoming the first side ever to win all three European competitions. And what a sad occasion to mark the retirement of Joe Fagan, the manager of Liverpool for the last two seasons, who confirmed this afternoon that because he felt that he was perhaps a little old for the job at 64 and because he felt tired that now had come the moment to hand over to a younger man and we are told just on that point not to think in terms of a successor but of successors with Kenny Dalglish very much the strong favorite to take over the role with one feels a helping hand from somebody of experience in management. But very sad scenes, bewildering scenes, all too familiar scenes at the final of the European Cup. The 30th holding of this final has been marred before it starts. And from the Heysel Stadium, in Brussels, let's go back to the quiet and Jimmy Hill in the studio. Well, thank you, Barry. And if uh, we can almost try and get our minds back to the game of football and uh, Liverpool Football Club at the moment, may I ask, uh, Graham, was it a surprise to you that Joe Fagan made that decision today? Yes, I thought he was going to give it another year. I thought um, at the end of next year he would have called it a day. And uh, I've said in the book I've just written that I thought Kenny Dalglish would, would have a chance to get in the job. This year, I don't know, if, I think it might be a wee bit early for Kenny. Maybe, maybe Barry's right in saying that someone else, along with Kenny, will be doing it. But I think it's a bit early for Kenny to be 
to be doing it himself. You know you're about <clears throat> not quite the same position as Kenny, but almost. And w would you think it's possible to take over a club of that size coming straight off the field? No, I don't think so, no. I think you'd need someone along, alongside of him. Of course, there's, there's Ronnie Moran and, and Roy Evans there who um, have been there a lot of years, and maybe one of those could help him. But I think uh, they may bring someone in from the outside. Maybe Bob time. Paisley could return even for a year or so. Possibly. I think um, Joe has definitely had enough. If he said that's it, that's it. And I know, I know the old boss misses it very much, but whether he could be persuaded to come back into it, I don't know. He certainly, um, they, they couldn't get anyone better than him to help Kenny on his way, could they? Mm. Terry, you've been mentioned with most of the clubs in Europe. They haven't linked you yet with Liverpool? No, no, they haven't, Jim. No, no possibilities there, of course? <laughs> no. <laughs> what do you think about a player like Kenny uh, coming off the field and doing a job like that as a manager? I think personally it's too difficult at the very top end of the game. I think that uh, if, if you're going to make mistakes, um, I think you should make them a little lower down where it's not going to be so expensive. And I think you've got to learn your trade in anything you do in life, and I think football management is no, is no exception. Mm. Well, let's turn to uh, tonight's game, which uh, so sad because we were, it was quite sparkling here. We were all looking forward to it very much indeed. Differences of opinion. You were leaning towards Juventus, were you not? Yes, I was. I've just felt that, um, it's, as I said Saturday, it's the individualism of Juventus against the great, which I feel great, teamwork of Liverpool. Um, the only thing is that I think the teamwork of Liverpool is so advanced and so modern, and playing against a sweeper system for a year now, I think that it certainly has weaknesses. And I think if anybody's going to find those weaknesses, it's going to be Liverpool. Mm -hmm. At the same time, we have three or four world-class players, individual players, and it depends whether those individual players function on the night or not. I just hope that whoever wins, it's going to be football because I've seen a couple of, which I feel, to be fair, disappointing games recently and I want to watch a game and afterwards I want to remember some lovely dribbles or some good passes or some good shoot. I want to remember something lovely about the game. And with the people that's involved tonight, we're full of that expectancy and we, we obviously I think everybody hopes tonight that we're going to see that. Well, we shall keep keeping everybody up to date, of course, when there is a possibility of a kickoff, but uh, the case for Liverpool, Graham, which is your side? Yes, I, th I think Liverpool will win because they'll have so much of the ball tonight. I think um, Juventus, with their sweeper system, will mm. sit back and try and catch Liverpool on the break, as they did in the Super Cup. And remember, the Super Cup was played in Turin. I think um, you'll see Liverpool a lot of the ball tonight because, as Terry said, um, they're second to no one when it comes to teamwork. You know, the passing, it looks a good surface. And, and I just feel that Liverpool have that much of the ball tonight. That, um, Sooner or later, they're going to get a goal. My only fear is, that, um, a great deal's made of platony about the goals he scores, but if you look at the goals he's created and the passes he's made in the previous rounds of the European mm. Cup, he really has got Juventus into the final of the European Cup. Mm. And I've been, I would have been a lot happier if uh, Briaski for um, Juventus hadn't been playing. I think he's an excellent player, and he'll play down the left-hand side, which is up against Phil Neal, and Phil Neal is maybe not as quick as... Right. I must interrupt, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but there is some news from Brussels at the moment, and I understand that the match may not even take place. Barry Davis. Well, still the struggle here at the Heysel Stadium continues to get the situation in order so that we can watch a game of football. That's the terrace at the left end, which an hour or more ago was occupied by supporters of Juventus with the main Liverpool body to the right. Down in front now the main stand and the home straight of Stadium Famous, of course, also for athletics as well as for football. They hold the Evo Van Damme Memorial uh, meeting here. And talking of meetings at this precise moment, uh, UEFA, who are responsible, of course, for all the European competitions, are meeting to decide what to do. We hear that uh, paratroopers from the Belgian army have been sent for. Um, the figure of those who are feared to have died is still at 15. And it appears that the idea of bringing in the members of the army is because obviously the spectators at the Juventus end are not aware indeed that there have been any fatalities and obviously we don't know either whether the fatalities are from those who traveled out from england or those who made their way from italy or indeed those who gained tickets in this capital officially there were fourteen and a half thousand tickets for each club 
and the crowd limited to 52,000 here in the stadium. But there, the majority, and let us stress this point, the majority of Liverpool supporters standing quite calmly, coming to support their team on its way to winning the European Cup for the fifth time. But they, like we, wait to see the outcome, hear the outcome, rather, of the UEFA meeting. So back to you, Jim. Well, we don't know quite what the answer is going to be from Brussels, but meantime, let's have news from John Humphreys. Well, the latest from the police in Brussels is that at least 15 people have been killed there and at least 100 people have been injured, some of them seriously. And as you'll have been seeing, the trouble is still going on. It appears to have begun an hour before kickoff when Liverpool fans broke out of their segregated area of the stadium and moved into the area occupied by Juventus fans. Scuffles and fighting began and it's reported the Juventus fans did try to move away. But a wall collapsed and caused some of the injuries. At one stage about 6,000 people were on the pitch. And I've just been given another piece of copy from the Reuters news agency which says at least 28 fans, 28 fans have been killed altogether so far. So clearly it's the worst incident of its kind that's been seen in European football. Now back to Jimmy Hill. Thank you John. Well the question I'm going to put to Graham and Terry is do you think the match should take place in the circumstances? Graham. No I don't think so. I think it's a very sad day for, for football. I feel for the parents who will be maybe watching this programme wondering if it's any of their kids who are involved in it. I think um, Maybe we've seen the last English team playing a European competition for a long, long time, Jim. Those consequences could be very serious, I mean, for football, for English football, Terry. Can you see your way for, I understand their meeting at the moment, that's what we've heard, yes. to decide about the match, but there's no question that other meetings will take place once this is over, mm. maybe deciding whether they'll have any British teams in Europe ever again, would you say? I fear the worst now. I think that is over the top. I think that uh, we've, we've, we've let it go and let it go and something should have been done a lot earlier. And that's very, very simple to say now. But nevertheless, it should have done. We've all criticised and we've all... I, I suppose really the, the, the main problem is is that no one's really come up with the answer. Uh, the I, and, answer. I, and I think the answer is personally is that the, the, the fear subject... There are the pictures now. You see, it's still going on. I mean, it just doesn't abate. Throwing stones... Just the same kind of uh, the appalling action that uh, that we saw. You remember Luton and Millwall? You wouldn't have seen that. No, but, I haven't uh, seen that. No. No, yeah, the police seeming powerless to stop it, and uh, um, as if they have uh, some kind of. You know, I mean, this, they the want thing to inflict punishment. The thing is, Tim, it doesn't happen anywhere else in Europe. Okay, it happens elsewhere in Europe, but not not on a regular basis, not to the same extent as we, as we have it here. Do you think that's because the police are more severe? Terry severe, in Spain, you were saying they're, that. They're just frightened out of their life. They just can't do it. And if there was just one incident, it's nipped in the bud, you see. But we've not nipped it in the bud, and it's got bigger, and it's got bigger, until, as what we're talking about, it's got completely out of control. And now it is a, is a hell of a problem to solve it. Yeah. But it's the fear factor is the, the, the thing. Anywhere in Europe, they're frightened out of the life of the police. And the police hands seem to be tied here. Yeah. Is it, are the police as severe in Italy? Yeah, I mean, there's no... It's the same situation. If they, if they do it, I mean, there's the Juventus players on, on the track. They just nip it in the bud. I mean, there's no... If someone steps out of line, they get punished right away. Yeah. And they're too and frightened to do it again. It looks that's there, Cabrini. The, that's Cabrini. Yeah, that's Cabrini. And it looks as if the Juventus players are uh, appealing um, to the fans uh, to just calm down and enable mm. them to get the match played. Because one wonders what would happen now if the match was put off, because then you have another problem. The people having travelled well, all that way. Well, I think the fact that they've sent for paratroopers suggests that they're, I mean, to me anyway, um, maybe they're not going to play it. I mean, maybe they're going to try and keep one set of supporters in the ground, but they'll go home. But you're going to have the same problem in the city tonight, you, when they play it or if they don't play it. After the game, both sets of supporters are going to be in the city after the game. Mm. So it is virtually an impossible uh, situation, really, for anybody to decide what is the right course of action. In fact, whatever is done um, is going to appear to be wrong. That's right. 
and the Red Cross at the stadium say that 30 killed and 100 are seriously injured in hospital. With so much trouble, it, it doesn't seem feasible, really, for players to come out After and all, play a game a, in that it's atmosphere. A game, it's a game of football. I mean, it's I mean, Graham's just saying about parents worrying, worrying if their sons are okay. It's almost like you're talking about them going off to war. Yeah. I mean, that's what it's come to when, we, when, when our teams go to Europe now. But, but once again, it's a minority, and, and so many innocent people get caught up in it. I think Barry Davis played it very well. It's a, it's a severe embarrassment. For everyone and now it's, it's gone beyond that it's a tragic that, I mean, now it's tragic died. now people it's tragic mm. would you uh, recommend i mean i know it would mean a change of law and so many of these things do depend on the way the government reacts to it the taking away of passports in circumstances like this of people who have been proved to be guilty i'd like to do more than that jim I think uh, I, I just feel absolutely... But that step hasn't even been taken. I mean, um, those that came back from Finland, was it, were, were suspended from five years for going to Finland, which is not very much of a punishment, is it, in those circumstances? Although 100 were put in jail over there. That was the last time out. Do you think the passport thing could be a, a, a deterrent? But you're talking about, now, we're talking about people being killed tonight. Now, we've got to... The, 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 we've, we've got to say beforehand that if people are going to get caught for doing that and we've got video cameras we can catch them the mother can't say my jimmy wouldn't do it because we can say look your jimmy's just beating hell out of little johnny there and it's mm. on the and he's got to go away for 10 years or whatever that's going to stop them they won't do it again and it's fear is the key you've got to frighten them because now we're talking of, we're talking about passports if it was nipping it in the bud we're mm. now talking about a severe major problem mm. and it is quite sick and obvious to everybody that's watching these pictures here this evening but i always felt that they continue to do it because they get away with it unpunished. And uh, the Cambridge, exactly. the Cambridge uh, justice seemed to be the first time, really, that, that, that they were really but, dealt but then with again, in people, a severe way. Then again, people were shocked by that. The fact well, that they were punished yeah, I mean, so severely. But they're, they're, uh, then there's no fear in anything, hardly, is there? They're not frightened of the, police, of the policemen anymore. And I feel sorry the policemen in some respects, they don't get a chance to sort it out. And it's yeah, got to be sorted out. That. I mean, the police, the police catch them, that's, they're doing a job, and then they go to court, and then you get these that's magistrates what I'm saying. give them 25 I, foot exactly. fines. Exactly. So exactly. you would like to see the sort of punishment... Severe, yeah. severe as it can possibly be. It can't be severe enough, because that, now, is past anything else I've ever seen. And I, and I, I, I just, I haven't got the words to explain how I feel tonight. And I'm sure everybody feels the same. We came here to talk about a game of football. Yeah, we kept talking about lovely things about the game, and all of a sudden we're faced with this terrible thing. Mm -hmm. It's taking some people's lives away from them and destroying the livelihood of others, because it's your profession, in a way, and it's the profession of a lot of people See, in this people country. People say, well, it's easy for, for Terry and I to talk about English teams or British teams being banned from Europe, because we're no, no, no longer involved with, with British teams. But I, I, I see that as the only answer. I mean. And the way the game is in England today, the team just can't afford to do without European football because there's so much money involved. But I think, I think, that, that's what it's going to come to, Jimmy. I, I, I can't see another way out of it. In fact, through being out of England, you probably see it in some ways more clearly. You I mean, get it Terry, in perspective. Terry's in Spain, I'm in Italy. I mean, there's no one, their fanatics the same as the same as our supporters are. I mean, in a different way, they, they're more inclined to I would shout at each other or have a bigger flag than other supporters. They don't want to be tearing each other's heads off like our supporters seem to want to do. They have announced, that is the announcement, saying that the game will commence, uh, but we're not sure at what time it will commence. I think what they're going to do is to get absolute control of the crowd and then uh, attempt to play the match. But it is an awful task to try and turn your mind back to a game of football i find it so sitting here well it's just the we're all shocked and we might be saying the right things or the wrong things there's people out there have, have got to make fast decisions who are not really perhaps ready for even though you, you should always when there's a, a british team involved and yet as you said earlier whatever decision they make now is going to be wrong because grounds they're going to worry about what's going to happen in the city in a beautiful place like brussels they're they're, ter they're going to be terrified See, you wonder, you wonder what the response will be when the, the supporters, and sooner or later, before the game finishes, they'll find out that people have died. 
Now you wonder what's going to happen then. I mean, they can go one of two ways. They can even become more hostile and more violent, or they take the correct way out and, and behave like human beings. Okay. I mean, that's, that's open <coughs> for argument again. Uh, quite a few people suggest that it's sometimes the thought of players on the field. Uh, but of course, this match hasn't started. But it does put an enormous amount of pressure on those players if the game does start. They've got to compete. Um, they weren't going out there um, in gentle fashion to win this match, either of them. Is, oh. you know, and neither should they, really, at this stage of the competition. That's so right. they're under extra pressure now, Terry. Yes, they are. Um, I, I, it'd be interesting to know what... I mean, what would you say, uh, Graham, that Joe Fagan, known the sort of bloke he was, what would he be saying now to the team? Well, I think... Um, They'll try and keep the, you know, the fact that people have died away from them because I know their lives, and that would worry them. I'm not saying that because of the friends of mine, but I know it would worry them. I'm sure yeah. it would worry the Juventus players as well. So they'll be trying to keep that, that away from them. Um, the dressing room will be laughing and joking in there. But, um, it's, it's just, it's just taking so much away from the game. I'm sure if we find it difficult to talk about it over those pictures because of shame and sadness and all kinds of other emotions, a player would find it extremely difficult to produce his best uh, under those conditions. He certainly would feel that before the game starts. I think once the game starts, I think that you'd get into the game and they'd be worried again about it afterwards. But I think once the game goes, you'll see a game very close to um, what we would have said, seen normally. But yeah. as well, said, also so. bearing in mind that Graham said that they might keep this information away from the teams anyway. Yeah. It, it, it doesn't seem, and I think we should make this clear, that the, that the injuries and deaths were a result of direct fighting, but of the war collapsing. Well, we don't know, do we? No, we don't know, but it does seem that. But, of course, it is the aggression that brings about a situation where In a war does collapse. Place, that's right. Well, let's uh, go back to Brussels and get an up-to-date report now from Barry Davis. Well, Jimmy, we're seeing pictures of the start of the whole problem. These are recorded pictures as some Liverpool supporters moved into the Juventus area. You can see the Juventus supporters trying to get over the wall to our right. Some of them are moving away at the top of the picture and down towards the running track. And it was the pressure of movement down towards the running track which resulted in the wall giving way and people being pinned underneath it. Just look at one or two of these faces. They're faces of, of fear, frightened people who just don't understand what has happened. And really, there's such an overwhelming feeling here, sitting in the stand, watching these pictures from earlier, looking at the stadium now, a feeling of total helplessness, a feeling of of sympathy for those who've been killed and injured, a sympathy for people who love to watch their sport, a sympathy for the game of football, which was one of those things to unite people, which is now in an extraordinary way become amongst a minority, some sort of substitute for war, that people go to watch football matches to defend their ground, to to stand up for their team. I mean, we, I heard Jimmy refer earlier to the Luton Millwall situation. That was all the results of territory being defended and of what had happened at another London ground a, a few weeks earlier. It had nothing to do with the cup tie itself, I don't believe, at Luton. And, and this is, is just a scene of, of total mayhem that resulted from people deciding that it was important to them to invade the opposition territory and as a result of that attitude that anger that demand to be seen to be the the tough guys and whatever you want to call them 28 people we're now told are dead and many others are injured and being taken to hospital and presumably some of those injured are in a serious state We've been told that the match will go on, and I, I really don't think UEFA had any other choice. I mean, there are people waiting in this ground, and the, the one thing that can take away the mind, if only briefly, from the incidents that we've seen, from the injured and the overwhelming sympathy, as I said, for those who have died. For the moment, at least, football will, we hope, become a unifying bond. And there is an enormous responsibility 
on the players now if they possibly can to put it out of their minds and to make it an attractive game and to try and show that they believe as the majority believe that football is one of the most beautiful and simple games and, and has been all around the world and now suddenly it's been besmirched because of an attitude which a decade and more ago was totally foreign to the British character but w which now has has grown and said it is a cancer on society. It's These are still recordings of, of the scenes earlier. And looking down at the, the wall that gave way, and the people who sought refuge in the only place they could go to, which in the present climate of debate at home, it should once again be said that the fact that there were fences that could be got through and people got onto the pitch that perhaps saved even greater injury. Still the policemen on horseback are on the main running track. Let me emphasize again, this is not a continuing battle. These are pictures that we are seeing, recorded pictures of the incident which, incidents which led to the trouble and the result of that trouble. At one end of the ground as I look now, we have mounted police on the home straight by the stand we have mounted police but in riot uniform and one has to say that the policemen at the Juventus end are conspicuous by their absence it's a lovely lovely still summer's evening but one which will be remembered for all the wrong reasons and by those whose family has suffered from it will be an evening that will never be forgotten there will be people here who will never go and watch a football match again and there will be people watching these scenes who will say i don't want to go and watch a football match but it is not football's problem football is is the scene which has been used because it is such a popular and the national game photographers still getting their shots it's a sad story jim but i just hope that we will have a football match here shortly and it does seem as though as every second goes by the chances of that are improving well thank you Barry um, really we've just been talking while we've been listening to you here and one of the things that's different in Spain and Italy and Great Britain is that there is national service in Spain and Italy um, I don't know whether you would feel that that is almost a must now yeah, in player, this country there's players there's players I play with um, one of them last year had to had to leave the club for a bit and go and do his his, his stint somewhere down south. I mean, I think not. That I know a great deal about national service, but I don't think it would harm the sort of people that you're seeing on the television tonight. Terry, would you advocate that among other things? I have for a long time because I think that it does give you some sort of manners and responsibility, and it does knock you into shape. As this, uh, in the same in our club, all our players have to do their year service, and that it's not a case of a saying what we do or what they do, uh, it's there and it's something that we can learn from and because we have got the problem here and uh, as I said, there's one thing the Europeans have always felt about the British people, that they can behave themselves and now it's just the opposite, you know, as I said earlier, they think the football's great but the people and, and we all get branded by this minority and, an, and it's an organised minority as, as well. As much yeah. as you see that tonight, there'll be, there'll be thousands upon thousands of Italians and Liverpudlians on the other side of the ground, arms around each other, sharing their drinks, sharing their food. As Terry said, it's a minority. Mm. It's a shame you just can't pick those well, up. I always felt that about the England-Scotland game, because you, um, Scots are very welcome in England. A lot of you live here, yeah, <laughs> you know, and have sure. done. And uh, you know, I think there's a great affection for the Scots. And what a lovely weekend that Wembley match could be. And mm. if they came down in peace when, when they did come, I think Londoners would give them a warm welcome. And as you say, share a glass of wine or a, a bottle of beer or mm. something and, and, and make it a lovely sporting occasion. But I'm afraid we're well past that and the sort of things that we've seen here today. Uh, it's very interesting because it does seem in the papers that now the government and the FA uh, seem to be falling out. So we're even having argument yeah. as to, to what kind of uh, means could be made to, to bring it under control. Mm. Uh, what, what line do you take on that? It seems that the government are saying it's football's problem. You should do something about it. I think that if it's inside the ground, um, it's, 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 it's got to be organised, I think, that we're saying if it's inside the ground, it's the club's it's his club's job to sort of protect that club and keep the walls and so forth as well as it can. But when it actually comes to um, the behaviour, 
that's got to be done to the government, in my opinion. And then, then, the, then if, as uh, Graham was saying, if the police catch these people and put them uh, into courts, then we've got to do our job by giving them as severe punishment as we can to see that it doesn't happen again. By stopping it, we're, by not stopping it, we're encouraging it. But a government's got to be single-minded about it and not just play games, has it? Well, the government's got to actually be very single-minded and got to think about the good of the people and the name of the country, not worrying about when it's going to win votes or not. That's mm -hmm. what we've got to be concerned about. And once we've got to say, let's get, never mind that, this is a severe problem. And let's really make it, warn them in advance, and if they do it, 10 years, whatever it is, I'm sorry, because uh, that's, I feel very, very strong about it because everybody's suffering. And what's more is the people that are going to watch the games is the worst thing because it belongs to the people of Europe. It's, the, it's their favourite game. The people that have loved from children, generations, and you do see in Barcelona, the little boy and his father and his grandfather all going to the game hand in hand. Three generations of people. 120,000 people with not a problem. And that comes from fear because they're frightened to step out of line. Mm. Now, if the government did accept <coughs> what you're saying, let's, let's take action and make sure that, as you say, a grandfather and a father and a son can go to a game again over here, what things would you recommend? What things have to be done by you've the to, government? We've got to deal with the troublemakers first, because the, the people are not going to start, well, for a long time, not come to football, and that is one of the main reasons why they Proper punishment to start with. Proper punishment is the number like, one priority. Like without a doubt. I mean, if cut you sort, away, if you cut sort, that cancer if you sort away. That out, mm. then you're going to get... You're gonna get families coming back to football in Italy. I don't know what percentage of, of, um, of the crowds are females in this country, but you come to any, any game in Italy, and I off the top of my head, it would be something like 25% of the crowd would be women. Mm. Right, or girls. proper punishment is one thing. National service we both, we've talked about, and I think we'd all agree on at some stage. Uh, now, what about when it happens abroad, as has happened here? Well, I think it's a mistake playing it in a city like Brussels. I think if English teams are going to be involved in finals again, I think you're going to have to take them to cities where they can handle that sort of problem, yeah. i.e. Barcelona, Madrid, places in Italy as well. I mean, they've, and, the, and these guys who are causing the trouble tonight, you don't think they would, they would no. step out of line in, in these cities because you know, the policemen are just going to come along with the, their batons and, and hit them with them. So in other words, what you're saying is, um, for want of a word, more brutal action by yeah. the police if it's called for. But well, you're not talking about human beings, you're talking about animals. I mean, the way they go on, they're, they're, they act like animals, so they should be treated like animals. Mm. Do you right. go with that, Terry? Yeah, well, I think that uh, the time's come when it's got to be stopped. And um, firstly, I would, I, I, would put, I would put them away. I would. Because I don't like... I, the only thing that worries me is that uh, then people go around battering people, people that, uh, that, that haven't caused the problem, and then the innocent one can be done. But when we see them on the video, we see them on the tape actually starting it, gotcha, you're in. Bye bye. Sorry, mm -hmm. and I tell you what, they won't do it anymore. All the time, I'm sorry to keep on about all the time that they think they're going to get away. They'll do it. I've read articles where this year I, we get the paper a day late or whatever, and I, I remember seeing that a boy saying, "Well, I do it because I know I'm, nothing's going to happen. Mm -hmm. I know I'm not going to. Nothing's going to happen to me." Well, bear in mind this is a government that's very strong on law and order, uh, and it must be uh, embarrassing to say the least that in this particular area they are failing. Um, but I, I, I have. The feeling in my own mind is that they don't realise the size of the problem to eradicate it. Mm. Would you say that? Yes, I know. I mean, it's, it's a great problem. I know because I know that if they would have, if they could have done something about it earlier, they would have done. But I still think there's political issues involved while we've not got on top of it a lot quicker. National service is unpopular. It doesn't win your votes, does it? No. Hmm? No, it doesn't. The prisons are overcrowded anyway, so and you've where got do you to give, you've got to give the young lads anyway. The, the, the young lads have got to uh, have something to to be proud of and uh, I think that in some ways you can be proud of having a uniform or you can doing something a bit more because they've just got nothing to do and then the people the strong influences that organize these take these stray people that have got nothing to do and they organize them into that is organized tonight well because we, I tell you what Liverpool that's I can't remember I don't know Graham would know but no, I can't remember that's happened with Liverpool that's ironic. I mean, they've normally, been great great, great support and a credit to the game for years and years it that is, is a surprise to me that and it's rather everyone. extraordinary, you know, so quickly after the other happenings recently which have disgraced us. Um, it's worth, I think, going back uh, to the ground just to get an up-to-date report um, Sorry, from man. Bobby Charlton and Barry Davis. Yes, well, if I can just join in there, and I agree 100% with what Terry says. I don't think for a moment that they'll ring back National Service, certainly. But I do feel that, that youngsters these days have to be frightened of something, they have to respect something. 
uh, if you find them they don't seem to be able to pay the fines and they share it if you put them in in jail or a detention center they don't appear to be any worse off than some of them were before anyway but i think that the only thing that you have to do is to try and actually implant in the minds before they even think about it that it's not going to be worth doing it because the punishment is too harsh um, there's lots and lots of people myself included think that a form of corporal punishment should come come back uh, because that is the one thing that you can't pass on to anyone else uh, when you see all these these young lads that are just completely undisciplined they just lose all sense of direction and discipline altogether uh, then it makes you think then somewhere along the line they have to be afraid of something so that if they do it that they're, that they're going to think twice uh, I do think that it's it's a tragedy this for our game and I do think uh, like Terry you know that the government have to take the the bull by the horns and they have to make some proper legislation to make sure that the the appropriate people are punished accordingly I do think that it's it's gone too far now and, and this probably is the end of the line as far as we are concerned and I think we've got to be prepared for whatever ever punishment UEFA or FIFA decide that we deserve and I can't say really that we deserve to be treated like that. Well, just to bring you up to date with the position the announcement that the game would take place came over the public address system um, but it appears to have been an attempt to keep quiet uh, in the stadium which is now in a somewhat unreal calm but there has not as yet been an official decision made by UEFA so we still wait to know uh, one or two supporters at the far end although in the stands they're very quiet uh, one or two supporters at the far end waving flags the public address still appealing for calm and for patience but we still have not heard officially from the governing body that the match will take place. The spectator prepared to take an extremely precarious position. The massed ranks of Liverpool supporters and one remembers the piece which Bob Wilson did in Sports Night which Phil Neal, who had hoped to be the fourth captain to collect the European Cup here tonight, was saying that they owed, they being the team, owed everything to their supporters. And one can remember back to 1977 when the European Cup was first won, indeed the start of the domination of the event by football league clubs, that supporters were allowed by Bob Paisley to join in the banquet afterwards. There was such a rapport between players and supporters and nobody ever gave any thought that there would be any problems. But I think that maybe we've seen that the humour with which the cop and Anfield was always associated has not quite been maintained in recent years. We never used to have chance there of obscene language but we do now and maybe one or two of that minority have been in the van of causing the problems here tonight. If you've just switched on and wonder why there's no football, it is that it's been impossible for the match to take place because of problems in the crowd which resulted in the collapse of a wall because of pressure of people. Uh, there were a number of injured and the latest report is that 28 people have lost their lives. Um, 30th European Cup still waits to be covered by television around the world. 80 television stations were prepared to report this match. And instead, they are reporting scenes which does nothing for the feelings of mankind, if I can put it that way. Still, there are expressions on people's faces suggest something which is impossible to define because they still want to get out and fight in spite of all the problems one end of the ground now has great empty spaces just litter on the terraces people have moved away the police still wait on guard on horseback and with their riot shields at the ready. 
these are Juventus supporters we are looking at at the right end of the ground and that gives an indication of the problem because the division there was precisely the same division which at the other end of the ground allowed supporters of Liverpool to move into an area previously occupied by supporters of Juventus I mean it is no barrier of, of any sort and it is surprising to say the least that with the record of problems caused by supporters coming from the United Kingdom if not supporters from Liverpool whose record up to now has been pretty well exemplary it is surprising that there were no police on hand to make sure that the difficulties which occurred were not cut off right at the outset but here are Italian supporters armed with pieces of wood and gentleman on the right if such I could call him a stave there is as I said a calm but there is fear in that calm are we seeing the end of the problem debris all over the running track some just prepared to sit it out some with scarves around their faces as would be bandits Joe Fagan we saw go down the left of the uh, main stand uh, I don't know whether he's gone again to appeal to supporters but still Jimmy like you we wait and we wait with fittings of great sadness I expect you at home are as astonished as we are to see still aggressive actions there on the ground, even at this stage, even bearing in mind what has happened. But let's go to the newsroom, pick up the news from John Humphreys. Well, it is still a very confused picture, and the only definite figure we have still on the number of dead is the 28 that we reported earlier from the Reuters news agency. It seems most of them died from crush injuries. They were trapped when a wall collapsed as some of the fans tried to invade the Juventus enclosure. Our reporter Wesley Kerr was within a few yards of that area and he's just been on the telephone with this report. The tragedy occurred about an hour before the match was due to begin after scuffling between Juventus and Liverpool fans in the overcrowded stands. Suddenly, six feet in front of me, a wall collapsed. Many, many people must have died in that moment in the crush of masonry and people. But it was some time before the rescue services were called in. Astonishingly, the first people called onto the scene were riot police. At first, bodies were carried out on crowd control fences. It was 40 minutes before I saw a stretcher. I counted around 30 bodies myself. They were piled up beside the stadium. Well, as Wesley Kerr said, the trouble started about an hour or so before the kickoff, when the uh, Liverpool supporters, or some of them, broke out of their segregated enclosure and moved into the Juventus area and then onto the pitch. At one stage, there were thousands of them running riot on the terraces and on the field, and for a time at least, the police did seem just about overwhelmed by the sheer pressure of numbers. The latest is that other news agencies and the ambulance service in Brussels have confirmed that it is at least 28 dead and some ambulance officials say it could be as many as 50. One eyewitness quoted by Belgian television a few minutes ago said many of the victims were trampled underfoot. They weren't actually crushed by that wall collapsing. He said it was terrible, people were lying, dying on the stands before our eyes. At one stage Juventus players came onto the pitch to try to calm supporters and the Liverpool manager Joe Fagan tried to, went onto the terraces and tried to stop some of his supporters who were still fighting among themselves. We hope soon to be able to give you a telephone number to call for information on the dead and injured, and as soon as we do get that number, we'll bring it to you. But now, uh, back to Jimmy Hill. Well, thank you very much, John, and uh, I suppose you wouldn't believe it, but people are ringing up for Scotland to say that we are using uh, the word British supporters. On a night like this, I don't think anybody is scoring uh, national points over one country or another. Uh, English, they come from Liverpool, some of them may be Scots, some of them may be Welshmen, I don't know, but I don't really think uh, that point is significant. It just is so sad. Uh, what do you think, Terry, um, could be the punishment, first of all, to Liverpool as a result of those supporters, 
uh, and a, a knock-on effect to other British clubs and maybe even to England. What would your view be on that if they do decide to punish? Well, it's a mammoth question and uh, obviously um, I wouldn't like to punish Liverpool because of their, their, their behaved impeccably for years. I still say it's down to the individuals and individuals should be punished. Why should all the good supporters be stopped? I, don't, I feel that, and I will use the word British, uh, British clubs because I feel that uh, we've, all had, we've all had problems over the years and let's not hide from that fact. Um, but I think that the main thing is the people that are responsible, they should be punished. I don't really feel the clubs. I, think, I, th I feel a little bit uh, sorry for the clubs that try to do everything they can. If, if everyone's satisfied that they've done everything they can, then I sh they should, they should, it's the individuals. If they're not satisfied they've done everything they can, then the club should be punished. But I don't think we should all get carried away and say every club should be, and Liverpool's done this. Liverpool, what about all the good times, all the wonderful way they've behaved themselves? No, I'm merely thinking of the way UEFA might view it. I'm oh, not thinking of oh, your particular no, view. Well, I'm sorry, I thought yeah, you were talking about sorry. my... With the UEFA, I think that they'll be hard. I think that they will put... Um, I think they will certainly put um, English clubs out. I, I would criticise the whole of Britain, but I think the UEFA would do something with, with the English clubs. All, all three English clubs, or more, there'll be five or six involved in Europe next season. Yeah, well, um, I, I think they'll do something this time. I, I, whether they'll just do it with Liverpool and use them as... Uh, See, they might use Liverpool because Liverpool are the biggest name mm. in European football. They might say, well, look, this is an example to anyone else who's going to step out of line. And I think, um, although Liverpool in the past have had a tremendous record, what's happened tonight um, ruins all that. And I think um, I'm inclined to agree with Terry. I think it could be, to say severe is an understatement. Mm. I think um, you could quite easily turn around and ban all English clubs in Europe for however long they feel. What mm. about the England team? I mean, how are people going to react to that? Because uh, there was trouble last time in Finland, was there not? Yeah, I think that uh, really, as a, as a consistent level, I think England have had more trouble than any of the actual club sides individually. Mm. I think that is even a bigger problem. Mm. In other words... And I think the main thing is that because it's, uh, it was said that it's uh, such a popular sport, it's also such a popular media for publicity, and they know that this is the way they're going to they're gonna get it. It's just we were dealing with animals and people with very small minds. And we must... I do want to differ differentiate between those people that's causing that trouble and the good supporters. I know there's many of those also, like Graham said earlier. Yeah. So I'm not trying to, let's not, before people start saying we're brandishing everyone with the same, I'm not. Mm. Well, we have some news, I think, from the stadium now, so let's go back and join uh, Barry Davis. Yes, Jimmy, the news from the stadium is that UEFA have decided that the match will take place. They've not told us yet when they anticipate the kickoff will be, but they have decided the match will take place, and I understand that the greatest factor in their decision was the crowd and the reaction that the crowd might take if the match was abandoned. They felt that it was much the best thing that the European Cup final should take place in spite of all the scenes that have preceded it. Still spectators wait. We've had one or two small fires from flags that were burned. Ventus so often seem to have their supporters in the shirts of their team, known as the Zebras, and that's the scene at the other end. The Liverpool supporters, and I think amongst that number there to the right, certainly there are true supporters who came to watch the game of football. They wait, they wait in the stands where we've had the former manager of the French national team, Michel Illago, has been up in the stand. Everybody's opinion has been asked as to why it happened and what could be done about it. And David Lacey of The Guardian, the top of the picture there, one of the many journalists giving their story to London. David Miller of The Times in the centre of the picture. And journalists, Jeff Powell of the Daily Mail with a rather fuzzy hair, journalists who, like the rest of us, have written and said many words on 
the problem of what has become known as football hooliganism, but which might more accurately be said to be hooliganism at football matches. And now they've got to find words again as you in the studio and those of us looking down on this unhappy scene have been trying to do. Bear in mind that really it's over an, an hour that we've been looking at scenes like this well over an hour. Still the police wait. If the paratroopers have been brought in, they're rightly conspicuous, although I suspect that gentleman with a berry might have something to do with that. But I'm only judging from the style of his headgear that they may well be outside the ground to try and prevent any further travel, but that surely people who have watched what has happened here this evening, surely they cannot feel that they want to cause more concern. Some of the banners from Liverpool supporters, one doesn't mind the amusing banners against their great rivals, Manchester United. One there that said Munich, which is a very different attitude to life. Of course, recalling the Manchester air crash that happened in Munich. How can you understand the mentality of somebody who wants to carry around a flag like that? And there have been other not as bad flags, but words which do nothing to suggest they're real supporters or indeed that they are part of the Liverpool scene. Members of the Juventus officials, official party were down there we were just looking at, helicopters flying overhead. It really resembles the scene at a battleground, which sadly it has been battle caused by a minority which has led to we still have a report of 28 deaths in the stadium that has as a backcloth that atomium that we're looking at which was built uh, for the World's Fair of 1958 it's supposed to represent the atom People in a position to watch the sporting scenes from there in restaurants and it is a quite marvelous view over a city where much of the goings-on of the European economic community take place where decisions are made and there will be great debate in the parliaments around Europe about what has happened here this evening it's also, of course, the headquarters of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, NATO. As we came here with knowledge of that to watch two teams try out their sporting skills against each other on a football field. And this is what we've seen instead. Once again, members of the Red Cross always are on hand and always do such a marvelous job in such an unfussy, unfussy and disciplined manner. They've had to sort out all the problems caused by an attempt by some people to get into an area which didn't belong to them. All around the commentary box, you might imagine there are a number of conversations going on in many languages relaying the story around the world. And it would seem that we have more riot police. And for sure the game will be played with riot police ringed all around the ground. And that will bring memories of a very long time ago of Wembley in 1923 when the match was played with human walls but what a different attitude amongst people was to be found then and I think the delay has been in fact to give time for these reinforcements to come from the center of 
Brussels to make sure that there will be no further problems at the stadium. And many of these will be working late into the night to ensure peace and will be very happy when the other nationalities have departed the land of Belgium. All the police taking positions at the Liverpool end. Well, as you can imagine, in these circumstances, the place is rife with rumour. And there are now doubts being expressed as to whether or not the announcement that the game would go ahead was to allow time for the reinforcements to arrive. We can only update you as we are informed from our position in the middle of the stand. All the dignitaries from UEFA and the two clubs are out of sight, away, away from the position where they had expected to be taking their seats to watch the match. And great discussions must be going on there. Remembering the Liverpool chairman, Mr. John Smith, is now the new chairman of the Sports Council, so has a position of great authority, and is a man of great authority. And we are now finding the ground is being slowly but surely encircled by riot police. latest information is that the match will go ahead but they are waiting until the proper number of police are in the ground to assure that it can take place without further problem and I understand that there is now an emergency number for people to ring at home who may fear that uh, they have somebody who might have been involved in injuries and that number we will give you as soon as we possibly can. Campaigns, first victory in 1977 in Rome, as I said earlier in very different circumstances. And I want a very similar evening as far as the weather is concerned. 1978, the trophy was retained again at Wembley. 1981, it was won in Paris and last year in Rome after the first penalty competition when Alan Kennedy scored the vital penalty. Kennedy, who's not included in the Liverpool team tonight, he's been out injured and his place has gone to Jim Beglin. And the cry of will never walk alone begins to go up. A cry which has been given new feeling recently by the efforts of many singers to use that song to contribute to the disaster fund of Bradford. The crown now very quiet. Spectators just watching the police take their positions and waiting for the football match to take place. The match should have started just over an hour ago. at both ends of the ground. In fact, it's so quiet in the main stand now that we can hear the clatter of typewriters. Sports reporters, once again, who came to a scene to report 
their stories for the back pages finding instead they have to report a story which will go onto the front page still one or two throwing things at the police it's quite unbelievable so I think we've said it many times before, Jim, but it's still the case. Like you, we are waiting. Well, two things really puzzling us here. One, uh, how the players really are beginning to feel in the dressing rooms, and also how people can still be cheering if they are aware of the seriousness, seriousness of the situation there tonight. Personally, I haven't got a cheer left in me, but uh, let's pick up the latest news from the newsroom and John Humphreys. Well, Jimmy, we now have the telephone number for those people to ring who are worried about friends and relatives in Brussels. The number is 010 010-322-517-9611. 010-322-517-9611. And I will repeat that number at the end of this news flash. It's the number of the central police station in Brussels. And we've just had a little more information about the nationalities of those who've been killed and injured. Brussels police said a minute or so ago it was a mixture of British, Italian and Belgian fans who were sitting in sections Y and Z. And the latest on the number of dead now stands at 35. And we've just had a statement from Downing Street. The Prime Minister, it says, has been following the television reports and shares what will be the universal horror at the scenes. She said, those responsible have brought shame and disgrace to their country and to football. Now, just to repeat that emergency number, it's 010 010-322-517-9611. 010-322-517-9611. And we'll have more information for you in our main news bulletin. Now back to Jimmy Hill. And of all the people in sadness about tonight, of course, the relatives and friends of those who are out there and those who may be involved um, have our deepest sympathy here from the studio uh, in London tonight. Um, there are reports that the Italians do not want to play the game, uh, and I can well understand that. I, I, as I say, it's difficult enough to sit here and uh, away from it all in some ways and, and, and still continue, let alone feel running around for 90 minutes. And I think the longer it goes on, Graham, the less likely yeah, it is that I players will want to I think the players, the, the players will know how serious it is now, Jim, I think. Obviously, some parts of the crowd don't because the last scenes we saw on the television now, they're still throwing things at the policemen. Now, mm. they obviously have no idea that people have actually died. Mm. But I would think the players now know it. And I'm not, I know the players personally, and there's no way they'll want to play it. Would you want to play in a game knowing that? I mean, it, it won't be the same game. That it wasn't the same game the minute people died. But mm. certainly, as far as them, um, spectacle on the pitch now, it just won't happen. Interesting that the prime minister is watching this uh, telecast and uh, has expressed sympathy. And but at the bottom of her mind, I think she will be even more determined, perhaps Terry, to do something about it. And she has the opportunity after all. I hope so. I must say, not being political, because it's extremely difficult for us to have come in oh. as some sort of experts on football. We're not too good at that at times, but um, you know, suddenly to uh, be thrust into a sort of political uh, hooligan discussion. But on the other hand, I, I just feel it's not only the present government, but I, I don't feel uh, the House of Parliament generally. I re read an article by Roy Hattersley, which, which showed he'd no real grasp of the problem either. I don't think any of them have understood at the moment uh, the damage that it, it has done, and that the difficulty that it will be uh, in every department to get control of it. Well, it, it amazes me if you say it doesn't know the extent of the problem, because it's gone on long enough and it's been bad enough. It's over 20 years. I don't years. think it's this government's fault. I think we inherited the problem. But at the same time, things could have been done about it a lot longer ago. Yeah. Now, without being party political, what I'm saying is I, I don't think that Westminster um, realises how difficult it is to get to grips with it and defeat it. How many very serious measures would have to be taken which would bring... Tremendous protest from well, all the do-gooders and goody-goodies. The amount of people who were, t or amount of countries who were taking this, this game tonight, mm. I think um, our government will now be forced into doing something really drastic, mm. along with UEFA, because I think they said that it was going to be 80 countries taking the game tonight. That's a lot, a lot of 
a lot of people, and, and I think when, a fairly strong opinion will yeah. be. And, and I suppose we are a bit insular, really, broadcasting to the British nation and perhaps thinking of it, thank you for reminding us that these pictures, instead of a football match, are going to 80 countries, That's which right. is even greater and shame. It's all, That's yeah, right. all the more embarrassing. Yeah. Well, um, do you think, I mean, it's um, asking all sorts of questions, I mean, uh, is it possible to play a game of football, really, at this stage for the I, players? I wouldn't want to play my game, knowing that, I mean, if I was still there, playing for Liverpool and in the dressing room now, I wouldn't want to play again. I'm sure Terry wouldn't want, want to play either. No, I think it's gone on too long now. I think it's got to be stopped. See, the players will have been, the players will have been buzzing. I don't know when this actually happened, maybe... 20 minutes before the kick-off was due, but whenever the players will have been building themselves up ready for that, now, after hearing the stories, they'll just be flat. And it is a matter of uh, adrenaline, you know, that, that is there at the time of the and then disappears. Comes into, it's not important yeah. anymore. What's yeah. important now is the, is, is the people who have died and the, the families who are now at home worrying about it. Because yeah. yeah. the, the same families will be in Italy as well, they'll be worrying too. Yeah. Well, it's, it's three nations now, according to the news, who are involved uh, in the death row. Um, and so everybody will share the tragedy. We're, we're in the middle of a Bradford City disaster fund. Um, it's happening at Birmingham as well on the same day. We're trying to sort of digest that. And now, uh, an even worse story. An even worse picture. Like and again, again, you can see that the idiocy is continuing. That is the uh, Juventus sense. so it, um, it's not only us, it does seem as if from Italy there are people who have lost their sense of reason and perspective in life. It's fun and games, you see, I, I mean, that's one thing that I think um, will have to be understood, that it, it has become a way of life and going to war on a Saturday has become fun and games for those people, and it's, it provides a, almost like a drug or, or you or, 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 or... A lot of it is organised. I mean, yeah. a lot of it is organised, whether that, that tonight was. But apart from the organised side of it, Graham, the, you, you know, you've, we've all seen the regular little bands that attach themselves to most clubs, and, and they do go for a Barney and a bit of fun at the best end of it, but at the more serious end, they go to do damage. No, yeah. they don't go for a bit of fun. I mean, I've sat in this trains talking in to them, and I talk to them, and they don't even... I'm really serious. Some of them don't even know some of the players' names. They are... They're talking look, about fighting. Look at this now, look. That's all they want to do is fight, and it's not... It's something terrible that's become a, a problem for football. What astonishes oh, me... Look at that. Look at that. What astonishes me is that that they are doing it in full view of the police and the police really are accepting it, no? Well, you I don't mean, know what the police have been told. Perhaps there's, they might be saying if you get amongst it, it might make it even worse. Perhaps they're trying to say, let it simmer, let it die down, and you're getting one, two little incidents. But you what, what you were saying earlier on, oh. look, he's actually doing his own bit of corporal punishment on, the, on that lad, and never mind the birch, he's administering it straight away, so there's one who is suffering somewhat. That's right. And I think yeah, the crowd are fair, on the side. To be fair to him, I mean, he was the one who was getting a stick off the... No, but he started it himself. He was actually a fighting There you go, a you see. Before. You start talking about who did what, and we're not sure. And that's the point, as I said before, was... You're talking about it might be the wrong one, but... He's pleading his innocence now, but he was positively aggressive in the pictures before, Terry. There's mm. no question about that. Yes. You see, and there's the vast majority yeah, just, just waiting to praying for a game that's of football. Right. Just praying for a game maybe of football. It, maybe it'd be better if they got the game started and maybe take their minds off it. I mean, no, it's just. And look at them. Apparently, it's as if that's a no-go area for the yeah. police. Phil Neal has uh, come out of the dressing room, had a quick look round the terraces, and uh, gone back in, maybe to assess the situation. You see, if the police have no control, of course, there may come a point if, if they're that violent where the players are in danger. I mean, if reason has gone out of the window entirely and the police haven't got control. You see, the, the policy of the police seems to be containment there uh, rather yeah. than arrest or yes. punishment. Does yeah. it not? That's right. Now, I can't understand that because it wouldn't happen in Spain, Terry, would it? They would be in among them, sort the lot out, and they'd be in vans off to prison. That's right. But that is... 
looked at me, I mean, straight away, I mean... Hey, I look, look. Yeah, they just let them do what they you want. You see, I, why are they allowing them look, look. to do that? There are enough police there to capture at least those three or four and take them away. They're Italian. Yeah, I know they're Italians, but I mean, whoever they are... <laughs> There's a total disregard for law and order of any kind with a death roll at the moment, as we understand, standing at 35. Well, it doesn't... It doesn't look like they're going to do anything about it, so it's not as a matter of taking some, uh, the, the trouble areas away and then getting on with the game. They're waiting for it to fizzle down and it's just not going to, by the looks of it, there. Yeah. yeah. You see, well, they didn't suddenly come there and paint that on. They came there with that, that? Red, provocative red. banner without any doubt. And it's so, um, you know, while they're looking to Liverpool supporters, who obviously, uh, many of whom, not supporters, shall we say, but Liverpool's followers, who are guilty, there's no question that Juventus fans too have a touch of the hooligan brush. Because that's provocative. That's not a peaceful banner in no. any sense. That's right. But we said that at the beginning, I mean, it's a minority and... Look at that, I mean, it's still, you, you couldn't wish for a, a more peaceful area, could you, than that? Yeah. And it's unfortunate, because there will be, the, they'll be mixed up with Italians and... Yes. I mean, the business of the masks, again, uh, is to be able to get away with it you know in other words as you say like or some barry mentioned the word bandits or whatever but again to disguise their faces so that they can't be recognized because they want to go really? in and do the damage they're, and then and then get off scot-free they're doing they're doing our well liverpool's cause a big favor there by showing that flag because it obviously proves it's not down to liverpool or solely liverpool mm. Well, it is an extremely sad situation, and at the moment, it, it does look as if, more than anything else, a decision of some kind is necessary. I don't think uh, it's in anyone's interest just to keep the thing uh, going for I mean, this length of time. And you certainly don't want to really see this, because this is all that is promoting other people to want to do the same sort of thing. Yeah, yeah there'll be people sitting at home thinking this is great, great viewing. I cannot understand how it is that they are allowed to get away with that in such small groups. But there you are, perhaps we will have some information from various police forces throughout the world as to why that can happen, why they are allowed to get away with it and abuse uh, society in that particular way. I know... Uh, and it, and it must be terrible for the people wearing their colours that, that have behaved. You know, we feel bad enough here, but to actually be there, wearing your colours, knowing what's what's happened, I mean, that must be a very, very See, sad last, thing. Last year, last year in Rome, after the game, the Liverpool, Liverpool, Liverpool supporters had a terrible time of the supporters of Rome and the, and the police in Rome, and you just wonder, you know, if they've... If we've gone there this time, that's nearly going to say something, I think. So it's not a, only a, a British problem, although you say, I mean, does it happen in Italy regularly, or does it not? Yes, you can see Phil Neal there. Well, you probably heard the voice of uh, Phil Neal there. And you can see the police are taking action at last. But for news of that announcement and what it may mean for the rest of the evening, let's join Barry again. Well, here is uh, Gaetano Shirea, the captain of Juventus, making a similar announcement to that of uh, Phil Neal. applauded at both ends of the ground 
and saying in his own language the same as Phil Neal had said we want to play for you we want to perform stop behaving as you're behaving and we will come out to play but sadly the problem which started at the left hand end is now getting a reply at the right hand end when we are seeing nothing more or less than street fighting fighting between young supporters from Italy although some of them have Liverpool scarves who are baiting the police I must say that both Shirer and Phil Neal, Phil Neal deserving of great credit very simple expression by the Liverpool captain and I know the players will be absolutely sickened by what is happening the implications for the future of their club and for the game will certainly not be lost upon them but these disturbances have now been going on for two hours and it seems as you were saying Jimmy that the police are ill prepared to take positive action for fear of starting a reaction at one end to what's happening at the other Phil again making his way around as one of the Liverpool supporters at least in Liverpool colours is carried away or helped away by men from the St John's ambulance the police understandably are preventing movement from anywhere in the ground it's impossible to dispatch anybody to the dressing room area to find out or to get official words from uh, either the two teams or from UEFA but I do understand that the Italians had initially refused to play and were persuaded that maybe playing was the only way of bringing to an end this ugly situation it will ask a lot of them but difficult as though as though, uh, though it will be for them I think it would be the right decision even after all this time there has to be something to take the mind away from the scenes that have happened but you can understand that they may well feel that they are personally at risk on the field as indeed I suppose it has to be said as anybody in the ground to the sort of mentality which is prepared to react in the way we are now watching I mean, it is, it is people just taking full advantage of the situation. Whether their motivation is totally hooliganism or whether it is inspired by a more frightening backdrop. Again, the St. John's ambulance men to the rescue. You can only assume that uh, this was caused by a missile being thrown from the crowd. Another announcement being made uh, in Italian. And it's actually to the Italians that uh, the words of reprimand and rule now apply. Obviously, senior members of the Belgian police force here. But things are totally quiet at the left-hand end, which is now totally the Liverpool end. There isn't a Juventus supporter in sight at that end. And the 